Today, we're going to be learning about dialogue and quotation marks basics. In this lesson, students will learn the basics of how to properly use quotation marks when punctuating dialogue. And basically, they'll understand what quotation marks are, that they can be used in different ways, and how to use that when they're punctuating dialogue. So to start with, what are quotation marks? You've probably seen them around. They look kind of like weird upside down commas, and they always come in pairs. But what exactly are they? Quotation marks show us a lot of different things. They can show us dialogue, which basically means someone saying something. For example, hello, the boy said, is one way that we can use quotation marks. Another way that we can use quotation marks is when we're directly referencing something. So basically, if someone writes something and you copy that thing word for word, you can say that someone else said that thing and then you can put it in quotation marks. For example, according to Interns for Good, dialogue is someone saying something. Since someone saying something are my word for word, you have to put that in quotation marks. The third thing that you can use quotation marks to show um, are book, film, magazine, play, song, and other things too, titles. For example, my sister and I watched The Princess and the Frog together. That's the third way that you can use quotation marks. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on dialogue. So how do we use quotation marks in dialogue? Let's take the example of this girl, Lily. Lily says, I like cake. So how are you gonna write that in a sentence with quotation marks and proper punctuation? First, let's take the sentence with no quotation marks. Just Lily said, I like cake. Those are the facts as we know them. Now let's moving on to identifying the different parts of the sentence. First off, we have Lily. Lily is the speaker in the sentence. The speaker is the one who originally said the word in the quotation marks. Speakers don't always have to be names like Lily or Jack or and stuff like that. They can also be pronouns like he, she, or they, or we. In the sentence, said is the action tag. Action tags describe how the quote is spoken. Said is one of the most common action tags, but some other examples include where it's like screamed or asked or whispered. When the action tag comes before the spoken words, you have to add a comma right after the action tag. The chunk of the sentence is made up of both the speaker and the action tag. So in the sentence, Lily said, is called the dialogue tag. So if I say dialogue tag, I mean Lily said. Here's some more examples of, of action tags. Do you recognize any of them? I like cake is the dialogue in the sentence, not the dialogue tag, just the dialogue. Remember when we talked about the different things that quotation marks could tell us about? Well, one of them is dialogue, which, as I said before, is someone's spoken words. And in this sentence, Lily says, I like cake. Since this is a dialogue, we need to put quotation marks around the words, I like cake. One set of quotation marks before the word I, and one set after the word cake. We also need to show that this sentence is ending. Since Lily isn't screaming or asking a question, the sentence I like cake ends with a period. Remember to always put the end punctuation before the ending quotation mark. Notice how the period is right after the word cake and right before the end quotation mark. Even if this period was replaced with a question mark or an exclamation point, it would still be right after the last word inside the quotation marks and before the actual quotation marks. So here's a little exercise so you can demonstrate what you just learned. In the following sentences, underline the speaker, put a circle around the action tag, and draw a square around the dialogue. Then rewrite the sentences with proper punctuation, commas, quotation marks, and unpunctuation. Pause the presentation to write down your answers because I'm about to click over to them. Okay. I'm assuming you paused the presentation, wrote down your answers, so here are the correct answers. So let's walk through them. For the first sentence, Sarah is the speaker, asked is the action tag, and can I go to the library is the dialogue. Since, since asked is before can I go to the library, we put a comma after asked. And since can I go to the library 
is the dialogue, we put quotation marks around can I go to the library. Since it's a question, we put a question mark as the unpunctuation. We put the question mark after the last word and before the end, the end quotation mark. The same applies for the second two. So the speaker and the action tag are pretty much the same thought process. For exclaimed, you put an exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Remember, before the quotation mark, after the last word. The third one is similar to our original example. It ends with a period. Now we're going to move on to a, another sentence. Except wait, haven't we seen this one before? Sort of. But notice that in this sentence, the dialogue comes before the dialogue tag instead of after it. So how does that all work out? We're going to break it down just like we did last time. Even though her name isn't at the beginning of the sentence, Lily is still the speaker here. And again, said is still the action tag, but it's not before the spoken words. So, so do we still have to put a comma after it? No. We need to end the sentence with a period, not a comma. So we put a period after the final word in the sentence, which is said. And as you can see, I like cake is also still the dialogue or spoken words here. Lily still said, I like cake. So we still need to put quotation marks around I like cake, one set before I and one after cake. But I like cake isn't at the end of the sentence here anymore. So what end punctuation do we put inside the quotation marks? Well, since the dialogue is before the speaker in the dialogue tag, we put a comma at the end of I like cake, right after the word cake, and right before the quotation mark. Basically, if you would have put a period at the end of the sentence, if it had been after the dialogue tag, put a comma instead when it's before. And remember to keep the punctuation inside the quotation marks. And remember that question marks say question marks and exclamation points also say the same. They will not turn into commas. So let's say it was, I like cake, Lily exclaimed. Even, if it's, even though it would be before the dialogue tag, you would still keep it an exclamation point not a comma. The comma thing is only if it would have been a period. Here's a second exercise to show what you just learned. Same instructions, different sentences. Again, pause the presentation to write down your answers because I'm about to click to the correct answers. For the first sentence, where is my basketball is a dialogue. Ahmed asked is the dialogue tag. Ahmed is the speaker and asked is the action tag. Similar to our example, since where is my basketball is a dialogue, we put quotation marks around it. And since it's a question, we put a question mark as the end punctuation. Since Ahmed asked, the dialogue tag is at the end of the sentence, we put a period at the end. The same rules apply for the other two exercise problems. Notice that explained ends with a comma. Explain can be really easily confused with exclaim, but it's not the same. Exclaim would be either a period or a comma. It's just a neutral sentence. Okay, now let's go back to Lily. So Lily says, I like cake, but I like ice cream more. This is a pretty long sentence. So how are we going to work with that? So notice the weird fit of the sentence. I like cake, Lily said, but I like ice cream more. Sure, it sounds right, but it looks kind of weird. So you already know the drill. Let's identify the parts of the sentence. First things first, Lily is still the speaker. No changes there, even though her placing is a little wonky. Said, our action tag is still the action tag, but it's in a tricky situation here. It's after and before dialogue. So we put a comma or a period after said. Notice that we split the dialogue in two parts. So the dialogue tag is basically sandwiched between two halves of a sentence. So since said is not at the end of a dialogue sentence, we put a comma after said. And again, notice how the dialogue is split into two. That means we sort of need to treat each part of the dialogue on its own. Let's start with I like cake. The quotation marks start at I and end at cake. 
Since cake is not at the end of the sentence, we put a comma right after cake, not a period. Now, let's look at but I like ice cream more. We sort of start out the same, with the first set of quotation marks at the beginning of the sentence and the second after the end of it. But since this part of the dialogue is at the end of the sentence, we put a period after the word more. And of course, before the end quotation. So, take a good look at the punctuation. Quotation mark, comma, quotation mark, comma after said, and then quotation mark, period, quotation mark. So you might have realized at this point that we can write the same piece of dialogue in different ways. Our first sentence was, Lily said, I like cake. And our second one was, I like cake, Lily said. Same sentence, just written in a sort of different way. In the same way, our new sentence can also be written in different ways. Notice how the punctuation changes with each different version of the sentence. So, exercise three. Again, same instructions, different sentences. And again, pause the presentation to write down your answers. Okay, let's go over our answers. So, notice that in this one, we have to draw two squares on each sentence. Basketball is fun, and so is baseball, are both the dialogue. Jill is the speaker, and said is the action tag. Notice the way the punctuation looks for each of these sentences. We just learned how to punctuate dialogue when you split the dialogue in two halves. But how about when you have two whole different sentences said by the same person? In this example, Lily says, I like cake. Ice cream is also yummy. That's two different sentences. So, same as before, we're going to put it first without quotation marks or any punctuation. I like cake, Lily said. Ice cream is also yummy. Lily is still the speaker and said is still the action tag. Except this time, said is not sandwiched between two halves of a sentence. It's after one full sentence, I like cake, and then before another full sentence, ice cream is also yummy. So since these two dialogue sentences are different, we are just going to ignore the second sentence and act as if the dialogue tag is only talking about the first sentence. Said is at the end of the dialogue sentence, I like cake. So we're going to put a period after the word said not a comma. So, these two sentences are our dialogue, but since they're two different sentences, let's put them in different colors, just to make this a little less confusing. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. I like cake has a set of quotation marks before I and a set after cake. And ice cream is yummy has a set before ice and a set after yummy. And for the punctuation, I like cake ends with a comma since it's before a dialogue tag. Ice cream is also yummy is at the end of its own sentence, so it ends with a period. Again, notice how the punctuation is always inside the quotation marks. It doesn't matter if it's a comma or a period. Here's another short exercise. You already know the drill. Pause the presentation and write down your answers. Okay, let's go over the answers. Um, again, with this one, you're going to draw squares two times in each sentence since there's two sets of dialogue. Notice the way that the punctuation works. Okay, so you might be a little confused about something. How do I know if something is two different sentences or just two parts of the same sentence? In other words, how do you know if you're going to put a comma after the action tag or a period? And yeah, sure, sometimes it might be super obvious, but a lot of times it won't be. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of the ways that you can tell whether it's two different sentences or just one sentence split in two. One of the first ways is capitalization. Notice that when there are two different sentences, the second piece of dialogue starts with a capital letter. That's because it's a whole new sentence and every sentence starts with a capital letter. But with dialogue that's split in half, Notice that the first letter of the second half of the dialogue isn't capitalized. That's because it's not a new sentence. You don't randomly capitalize letters in the middle of normal sentences. 
and he won't hear either. Another way you can figure it out is that the first piece of dialogue ends with an exclamation point or question mark. Dialogue that ends with a quick question mark or exclamation point is always a complete sentence, meaning that any new dialogue that comes after it is its own full sentence too. Also pay attention to the end punctuation of the second dialogue. In this one, it's mine is green. It ends with a period, even though the action tag is asked. That's because when there are two different sentences of dialogue, the action tag is only about the first piece of dialogue, even though the speaker stays the same for both pieces of dialogue. This is another good example of what I just said. Even though the action tag is, is exclaimed, the second sentence ends with a question mark, not an exclamation point. Also, since it's an exclamation point at the end of the first piece of dialogue, you know right away that it's two different sentences. Here are a few extra tips to remember. First of all, when a new person speaks, start a new paragraph. The first one, I like cake, Lily said. Me too, Joe exclaimed, is incorrect. That's because even though two different people are speaking, it's in the same exact paragraph. That gets confusing because it's like, who's saying me too? The second one is correct. I like cake, Lily said. Then there's a new paragraph. Me too, Joey exclaimed. Another really important tip is to always capitalize the dialogue just like you capitalize normal sentences. I already kind of went over this, but look at this in a simpler way. Lily said, ice cream is yummy. Okay, so ice cream isn't like I, which is a word that you always capitalize, but still it's at the beginning of a dialogue sentence. Just because it's not at the beginning of that real sentence, you still have to capitalize it. So, we just learned all about the basics of quotation marks and dialogue. Want to dive in further or just understand some of the concepts in this video a little better? I put together a list of videos and activities that I recommend. The first one is this really great quiz game. The second one is a catchy, cute YouTube video song. And the third one is a really great classroom activity. You can honestly even do it at home. It just depends on time and materials. And honestly, they're not even that hard to find. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning it just as much as I enjoyed making it. Bye!